Hello, everybody. I know we've lost a good friend, Bob Ailey. You know, we can't pass this opportunity up. And what's ironic about this is I'm currently standing in Bob's old office filming this. He left us a gift and not intentionally for this moment, but a gift to give us a chance to reflect on life, reflect on things that are important, especially in this time of the pandemic, that it gives us some good ideas of what the big picture is. So take the time and I know it's probably a good amount of time of your, of your life, 15 minutes, come on, it's not too bad, to just take the time to reflect and, and pray a little bit and think of something that is connecting you to God in your life during this time. Enjoy this and know that it is a gift from Bob. Thank you. The Lessons of Life by Bob Ailey in May of 1996, I attended a five-day, four-night retreat at Ghost Ranch in northern New Mexico. I was one of 127 men from around the globe attending a retreat titled Rites of Passage. The retreat was given by Father Richard Rohr. It was a meaningful spiritual experience that changed my life. The lessons from this retreat are valid for both men and women. The lessons are actually awarenesses that all people need to face and in that process take steps toward maturity. In short, the lessons are steps to become a mature Christian person. The first three days of retreat were structured with short, crisp talks followed by time for each of us to walk and meditate in the desert. The talks were thought-provoking, and nature was awesome. Nature has such power for making us feel our Creator's presence, power, and beauty. In one of the first talks, Father shared how native tribes introduced their boys to manhood. He shared that native tribes which are often referred to as primitive, are actually more advanced than is our culture when it comes to bringing boys into a sense of manhood. In a tribal setting, boys were born and nurtured by their mothers until the boy was not dependent on his mother for existence. At that time, the men of the community took the boy away from his mother and from all other women, and they placed him in a community of men. The task for the men in this community was to teach the boy the lessons of life. Once it was determined that the boy understood the lessons of life, they would have a simple ceremony celebrating the movement from childhood to adulthood. At the end of this presentation, Father sent us out to meditate on what we needed to learn in order to become real men of maturity. The average age of the retreatant was about 50, but in many ways we came on the retreat like little boys and left the retreat as men seeking after genuine maturity. As I said earlier, the first three days were a series of talks and walks that all of us seemed to find as life-giving. On the evening of the third day, Richard told us that tomorrow was going to be a very special day. He instructed us to bring in our backpacks at least two liters of water and whatever else we wanted. The next morning, the 127 of us assembled in the presentation area. Father Richard began by saying he was going to send us out into the desert. This seemed like nothing unusual to me, since we'd been spending time meditating in the surrounding desert environment. He told us, though, this time that he wanted us to walk and walk and walk until we found a place not within hollering distance of another person. When we found a place that called us to it, he told us to make a big circle on the sand and to sit in the middle of that circle for at least five hours. 
By this time, I was convinced that he'd gone mad. First of all, he's sending me literally miles into the desert to be alone. Since I don't do creepy crawly things, this had me totally frightened. Sitting for at least five hours, well, he's ruined my entire retreat. But then he caps it off. He says, we will not be eating today. Man, I felt angry then. Father called each of us up to him by alphabet, of course. I was the third called. He anointed us with oil and gave us a small sheet of paper to put in our pockets to read when we'd found our so-called sacred place. Well, I began, I walked and walked and walked for at least two hours until I found a place so far off the beaten path that I knew that no one had ever set foot in this area. I found a huge tree and I made my circle around the tree. I sat down against the tree, and I was totally exhausted. Curiosity had the best of me. I just had to know what was on that little piece of paper in my pocket. The paper had five very short statements. The phrases were the five lessons of life taught to those little native boys once learned, they were on their way to full maturity. The first statement, life is hard. This caused me to reflect on how I'd been living life. I bought into the popular philosophy, if it feels good, do it. And if it doesn't feel good, avoid it. Too often, when the going gets tough, I want to find another way. Reality, however, is life is hard. There is no happy ever after in this lifetime. I spent a lot of time reflecting on how this lesson in life needed incorporation in my own daily living. The second message, you're going to die. At my age then, and especially my age today, I can't help but realize my days on earth are short. I feel like God has blessed me with a relatively long and good life. Too often I take it for granted, especially in the ways that I don't treat myself as a gift of God. During the reflection I came to realize that I must learn to live fully in the now. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow may never come, so my call is to live in the moment. Lesson number three, you are not that important. When I first read this, I was really mad. I thought this lesson was the opposite of what I try to do with students every day. My goal is to help them feel good about themselves. During this reflection, I had a real moment of clarity. It was as though a light finally came on. As I was taking in the beauty of my surroundings, beautiful colored birds, rock formations, the sound of the breeze and the leaves of the trees, I got this image that life is like a huge, beautiful puzzle. I am a piece of that puzzle. And that puzzle is not complete without the piece. However, the piece is not the whole puzzle. And I've been spending far too much time concentrating on the piece, me. And I'd lost sight of the bigger picture. Lesson four, you are not in control. The fact is, I cannot change other people, and the more I try, the more frustrated I get. There are only two things that I can change or control, and they are my actions and my reactions. Too much of my life has been spent trying to fix and change others. It is my actions and reactions that need my attention.
The fifth lesson, your life is not about you. This was very much like the third lesson. As a result of the time I spent thinking about this, I realized that God did not create me for me, but God created me for thee. I have been given life so I can serve and love others. At some point, I pulled my watch out of the backpack and I was absolutely shocked to realize that I'd been sitting under that tree for over five hours, meditating on those five lessons of life. Those were the most powerful five hours of my life. I knew I had to leave that place so I could get back by dark because I still don't do creepy crawly things. I took many pictures of my sacred area so I could always remember these spirit-filled hours. As I began to leave the area, I started crying. It was hard to leave such a holy, enlightening moment in my life. On my trip back, I reflected on the many times that Jesus and other characters from the Bible, when ready to do something really big, they go out into the desert or onto a mountain to be alone with God. Now I can understand what that must have been like. As I came back into the camp, most everyone had wet eyes from crying, and all of us felt like we had experienced real God time. That evening, Father Richard shared that tomorrow will be our last day on retreat, and that there are six lessons of life and we would spend tomorrow on the 6th. The 6th lesson is that there are only three things that really matter in life, and they are faith, hope, and love. The last day was spent sharing our desert experience and discussing how all five lessons take on a different meaning with God's love. God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. Upon returning to Kansas City, I had my film developed. Looking at the pictures, I once again began to cry, tears of joy, holy tears. No picture can capture what happened to me on retreat but one of them came closer than any other. This was the huge tree I sat under. And as the desert sun came through the branches, it formed a rainbow circle. Somehow, this demonstrates how God came into me and I came into God so intimately that I will never be the same. Now, I challenge you to spend just the next 20 minutes meditating on the six lessons of life using the reflection sheet provided. Be sure to put your name on the sheet. These will be collected at the end of your reflection and sometime this year a formation director will meet with you to talk about these lessons and how you are applying them in your life. The first five lessons, if taken alone, can really be overpowering. But with the sixth lesson, we see how important God is to our daily living. Yes, life is hard. But with God, our burdens seem much lighter. We are going to die, but with God, 
death can be viewed as a new and a glorious beginning. We are not that important, but with God, we have all the meaning in the world. We are not in control, but with God, we cannot control or change others, but we can control our actions and reactions. And your life is not about you. But with God, you become his child. And you share his love and power. Faith, hope, and love give meaning to all of life. And they are our ticket to eternal peace and happiness.